It's winning time. Welcome back, everyone, as we are breaking down this second season, talking about episode four titled The New World. As the start of the Lakers season starts off rocky, we see Coach Westhead wants everyone to buy into this system, but he also wants full control of the team. Meanwhile, all Magic Johnson wants to do is to find a new team. We'll be discussing that and much more in today's spoiler breakdown recap. But first, let me know what you all thought of the episode. How did it handle the rocky start for the season for the Lakers, but also how did it handle the drama going on with in the locker room during this time but i want to also know right now in the comments who handled the situation worse was it coach westhead was it magic johnson or was it both of them equally let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section as we got an episode to break down full spoilers ahead the start of the 1981 season begins, we see after winning the championship last season that Larry Bird is gracing the Sports Illustrated magazine and not Magic Johnson. But hey, right now, the Lakers are whooping on the Celtics, leading at halftime 73-45, but don't let that score fool y'all, y'all. Number one, it's the preseason. All the teams are trying to get their players in shape, they're trying to get their plays implemented, but also, none of the starting five for the Boston Celtics is playing a second in this game. So don't let the score fool you, but speaking of fools, don't let Paul I'll tell you differently because he don't care he loves this lead because his system is working good in his eyes but also to add more happiness to his fuel of fire he couldn't be happier right now because he's reading the spread of the magazine which is covering his system that the lakers will be running this season but this scene to me the perfect example of the differences between the coaching style with paul westhead and pat riley paul he's great at the numbers right he's an analytical thinker which can work for some teams but you have pat riley who looks at the more intangible things of a players as the scene is pointing out we saw that paul was about to cut hurt Rambus. Now, Kurt Rambus wasn't a Hall of Fame player by any means, but if you are a true Lakers fan like myself, anyone would tell you he was a hard-nosed player willing to do the dirty work, and even though he didn't have all the greatest numbers in the world, he was a key member of the Showtime Lakers, and he was also very popular with the fans. So this is just another example of how, yes, Paul did certain things right, but he didn't see the things that didn't matter sometimes on the stat sheet that makes a player special. Cutting over to what the players are going on in this time, they're not fully bought into the system and they're not really believing in their head coach. Cut to Red and Bus exchanging words about Magic's 25 million for 25 years deal. Red knew about this because he was actually head of the committee at that time, but after Bus jokingly says to Red how badly the Lakers were whooping on the Celtics during that game, we see Red took the competition to another level as he tells the coach of the Celtics to let Larry Bird play in this game, but then he really shakes things up by spilling the beans to the media on the deal that wasn't supposed to be public. Remember, last week, Buss told Magic that he wouldn't let the details of his extension go out there because he wanted to keep the morale of the team going good, but hell, all that is about to change. As the headline reads, Lifetime Lakers' Biggest Deal in Sports. So now that the cat is out of the bag, tensions are high in the locker room over Magic's new deal, and even the cap has some words to the media, as Kareem tells the media that he doesn't feel too confident on his spot of the team, and he feels like there's people being chosen over each other, and this doesn't feel like a family unit as it used to be, and he even mentions that he's thinking about maybe leaving the Lakers and joining the New York Knicks, and that's possibly on the table as this information spreads to bust in the management, and it has all of them going into frenzy. Bus calls for a late night meeting with the management and coach. He learned that Kareem is kind of dodging Bus right now as he's rescheduling meetings with Dr. Bus. But we see Paul Westhead takes this chance to stand up and he believes he has to be the one to talk to Kareem and to bring the cat back in, let him know he's head honcho, and more importantly, he has to hear this from his head coach. Bill and Jerry West are obviously not a fan of this idea, but they leave this meeting because Paul wants to have a one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Buss, and Paul lays his cards on the table. He lets Buss know that Magic, he's been acting up in training camp, and he's been resisting the system, but more importantly, I can't believe Paul said this to Buss. He tells Dr. Buss that he has these type of emotions, he's running this type of way, he's moving in this type of manner because he has a direct line to the king. Now, Buss reminds Paul that he's been very accommodating for all of his demands, and he thinks that this drama right now is just a speed bump as Paul tells him that he will bring another championship back to LA, and Buss, well, he tells him he better bring that championship back or else his job is on the line and he needs to remember who is the king. 
Meanwhile, this isn't the only drama going on with Dr. Buss as there's competition going on under his own roof between Jeannie and his girlfriend or soon to be fiance, Honey, because Jeannie right now feels that Honey's taken away the attention from her father. We'll get more into details on that a little bit later, but if you all have been watching my breakdowns the last few weeks, this particular plot with Honey, Dr. Buss, Jeannie, and the boys is the weakest element of the show so far. And I'll get into more details of why I feel that way, but going back into the player drama in the locker room where Magic Johnson contract is brought up yet again and this time it's by Norm who mentions that he's practically Magic Johnson's like a half owner of the team but Magic brings up a very legit point if this deal was given to any of those players in the locker room they would have taken it and I 100% agree with Magic at this point but Norm he doesn't stop the conversation there look I can understand both sides of the argument but honestly very shocked by how Norm was handling this conversation especially after that mafia shakedown last week Norm where was this energy when you were in the room with Magic and Dr. Buzz last week? But hey, it's a week later. He's with his boys this time around. He's not solo, two against one. So let me know what you all thought about Norm and his approach. And do you side more with where Norm was coming from? Or do you take Magic's side in regards to if that deal was offered to any of those players, they would have taken it? Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section. Add more fuel to that fire. Coach Westhead walks in and lets everyone know that he's been empowered to run this team and the system will be used at all times and if anyone is defiant well they'll be sitting on the bench next to him and as he says those words he looks directly at Magic Johnson so he'll be taking tallies at home that to me not a good move by Coach Westhead because you're singling out a player in front of your entire unit that was a bad unprofessional move in my opinion but hey we got some examples from Magic later that he didn't handle things properly, but right now I gotta say that was very unprofessional by the coach at that moment. Fast forward to it is a Halloween opening night to start the season, and they have to play the same team that eliminated them in the playoffs last year with the Houston Rockets, and surprise, surprise, they end up beating the Lakers again by 1.113-112. We see the Lakers lose their very next game to the Nets, which by the way, these are, should be blowout victories for the Lakers right now, especially with the team that they have on their roster. But right now, things are broken. Magic hates the system as he's calling Cookie, trying to figure out what he should do in his current situation with not only his coach, but also all the drama with his teammates surrounding his contract. Meanwhile, Coach Westhead seems to want to break this team from the inside. As he's having this conversation with Kareem about him losing his job if he doesn't get things up and going, which to me is another example of a completely unprofessional move i'm not saying players can't have relationships with their coach or have like these type of conversations where they're maybe approving of moves from management but to talk about losing your job and then to add more to that he brings up the fact that cap's been treated wrongly by management and the team and that if he left to go to the knicks he wouldn't be mad at that because of how the team's been undervaluing him I'm sorry, guys, but what is wrong with Coach Westhead? Again, I know this is probably fictionalized and dramatized for the show, but sticking to the context of the show, that is so unprofessional to have that conversation with your star player about you potentially losing your job if you don't win games, but also, hey, if you leave, I understand where you're coming from. No, that is not how you handle that. Again, you can be honest with your players with certain subjects, but I think this is just offline. But right now, to me, it looks like Coach Westhead is a mole working for the Celtics. But let me know what you all thought of that conversation. As we see, the Lakers are just a roller coaster of a team right now where they'll win a game and they have confidence and then lose a game, win a game, lose a game. While all that was going on, Magic isn't feeling like Magic anymore. He feels like he's not able to be himself. As we see right Right now, the start of the season, six games in, the Lakers have a disappointing record of two and four. This is where things get a little bit rocky, as after they lose to the San Antonio Spurs by almost 20 plus points, we see a brief conversation between Kareem and Magic, where Kareem is giving Magic some humble pie to let him know, put your ego aside. The same thing you told me last season, you need to apply that to what's going on with you right now, as Paul has another public argument with Pat Riley in front of the players on the bus, as he's mentioning how Magic, he isn't running this team, and Magic walks on the bus as he says this and he walks away from the team as Paul tells Cooper to go get Magic to return to the bus and if he doesn't do that Cooper's going to be walking home and taking a cab 
what in the world was West Head drinking, y'all? Like, number one, just from a dangerous perspective, how are you going to tell your star point guard, Matthew Johnson, and your starting shooting guard to go get a cab if they don't listen to your orders? Like, I'm sorry, y'all. West Head is losing his goddamn mind right now. Like, because number one, they don't have, like, private bodyguards to protect them, to taking a cab in the middle of the night in San Antonio. Coach West said he's losing right now in my eyes. But again, we're going to have some examples of how Magic did some wrong things in this episode as we cut to Jerry West and Bill talking to Dr. Buss and letting him know that Paul, he's out of control. And more importantly, he's lost the control of his team. As they suggest to Dr. Buss that maybe a coaching change should come about. Now, obviously, Dr. Buss doesn't want to hear anything about that, especially after what happened with Jack McKinney last a couple seasons ago. And we see Buss believes that he's a winner and he's not willing to pull a plug quite yet. And to make matters worse, we cut to seeing Pat Riley having a neck injury due to all the stress of Paul not listening to any of his ideas, as Pat Riley flat out tells Paul that if they keep losing at this rate, they're both going to get fired. And we see Paul responds, he doesn't care. Well, hell, I could have told him that. You could see that he clearly doesn't care by the way he's been handling himself, not only in this episode, but based on things in early on in this new season, as Paul knows he's got luck on his side. He's gotten this opportunity after what happened with Jack, after all the drama going on, but he still managed to win a championship. And he's not willing to go down this way, but more importantly, he's willing to go down with this sinking ship no matter what. <laughs> Again, Paul Westhead's ego in this episode and the way you see Jason Siegel playing the character, I talked about it last week, where he has this type of mannerisms, he has this charisma where you just want to smack and choke the hell out of Coach Westhead, but there's still this level of like, you, you kind of understand where Westhead's coming from, the way Jerry West and Bill kind of undermine him about coaching decisions, player decisions, contract decisions, the way the players kind of ignore him, you can see where he's coming from, but the way Paul is handling this is just completely wrong but again Jason Siegel the performance as well as bringing in the Pat Rally of it all how Adrian Brody plays into this they're doing an excellent job but all of a sudden the Lakers find a three-game winning streak and we see the coach is out partying in the club he tells the media that the system is working perfectly but then he goes ahead and says that you can plug any player into this roster and the system will work obviously that isn't something that Magic Johnson wants to hear as he tries to set up this meeting and he does set up the meeting with his partner in Dr. Buzz and Magic is just trying to express himself and let us know that things just aren't working well even though we're winning right now the system won't work for how he plays and more importantly it doesn't flow well with how the lakers play basketball we see dr bus he says he pays magic to play basketball and he pays paul to be the coach and he doesn't tell any of them how to handle that so i like where dr bus is coming from because it is a situation where you guys are grown-ass men you need to figure this out i don't need to step in and be the mediator i'm just the, the owner of the team i'm not the therapist of the team so i understand where dr bus was coming from but out of nowhere we cut to see him buzz telling genie that he's ready to tie the knot with honey she disapproves of this and just to kind of nip this in the bud i've been saying this last few weeks and i don't want to be like a sour puss because i love the show so much but this plot is like a boring halftime show. <laughs> like all the stuff with the Lakers drama, the contracts, the beef between the coaches, the beef between the coaches, and obviously the players. That stuff to me is the showtime of this show. But whenever we cut to the bus drama, it just slows down the momentum. And right now, it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Again, I don't want to keep dragging this plot down because number one, the performances are great. I understand where the show is trying to show this perspective of, look, everything right now in Dr. Buzz, sports-wise, he's trying to figure things out, but it's not working out. But in his personal life, things are working out. Look at the genie of it all, right? She was successful. Season one, they win a championship. She has great ideas. Her dad's listening to her. The family's starting to come together, and all of a sudden, this woman comes in. So I get narratively what they're trying to do. I just don't think it flows as well, and it's not as interesting as the other plots. Let me know what you all think about all that. Cut to having a meeting between two coaches 
is we finally get the return of Jack McKinney who reminds little Paul where he came from as they're having lunch about their matchup with the Pacers versus the Lakers coming up soon but we see Jack tells Paul while he's proud of Paul for what he's doing not necessarily how he's embracing his system and how the Lakers have been playing with his offensive plays but more importantly he's happy for Paul about how he's embraced the Hollywood lifestyle because he could never do that he all he thought about was basketball but all this kind words won't stop him from exposing Paul and showing that his system doesn't work in an upcoming game I'm not gonna lie I miss Jack McKinney I really enjoyed this kind of scene because again it shows the more vulnerable side that even though his ego in this episode was at a highest level possible he still has respect for Jack McKinney and I really just enjoyed their chemistry on screen as we cut to the actual game Lakers versus the Pacers as we see Pat Riley pulling Magic Johnson to the side and he just wants to know why isn't Magic buying to the system I really enjoyed this quick scene I honestly love the scenes between Magic and Pat Riley the question at hand is will Magic put his heart into the system before he completely throws it in towel we'll talk about that here in a second but let's cut to the actual game as the players are all saying hi to Jack and Paul's face says it all. He's jealous right now and I understand why because obviously a current coach doesn't want his current players to be all happy to see their old coach but this doesn't stop the game from being a nail biting down to the wire back and forth game as we cut to double overtime with the Lakers up by one with very few seconds remaining. See Paul makes a bad call for Magic to make a double team which almost cost him the game but they end up managing to win the game and we see that Paul Paul is kind of embracing this win, not only because they won the game and the winning streak continues and he thinks his system is working, but more importantly, he beat Jack McKinney. Now, as we wrap up the episode with the Los Angeles Lakers versus the Utah Jazz, and we also have Magic Johnson versus Coach Westhead, we see that there was a discommunication on the defensive end, which has Paul blaming Magic Johnson, causing them to have this scuffle going on. He doesn't want to join the huddle during a timeout, as we see the Utah fans, which by the way, if you are an NBA fan, you know that Boston Celtics fans are pretty bad, and they really laid into the players, and there's a lot of racism that goes into that. But speaking of racism, Utah Jazz is very known to coming at different players, black players, as we see the crowd coming at Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson comes at them, gives them the finger. Westhead, stick up for your players, stick up for your team. He kind of buys into the Utah Jazz, kind of leaning into them coming at him, telling Magic to leave those people alone. Like, come on, Westhead, can you stand up for Magic once in this episode? But we see that this beef between them just gets worse. Westhead threatens to have Magic go into the locker room if he doesn't join the huddle. We see that Magic slowly starts to walk towards the locker room, but then he starts to have all this recalling of all the negative press that's gonna come of this, all the stuff going on off the court, on the court. So he does eventually join the team. They end up winning that game by literally like one or two points. But despite the win, we see this issue has to be addressed immediately. As we see them talking and having a word in the closet, and we see Paul just lays it into Magic Johnson if I don't want you to play, you won't play. If I want you to play, you will play. And we just see Magic takes it in. He doesn't really come at, and I respect Magic Johns for this. Again, <laughs> Wes said, ego is crazy. The media is outside waiting for their word from them. Magic goes to the locker room. Meanwhile, Paul talks to the media and he tells them this very interesting quote. He assures them that the almond tree bears its fruit in silence. I love the way Jason Siegel played that scene because it's just comedic genius. But speaking of silence, silence isn't on the menu for Magic Johnson as he tells the press that he's not having fun, he's not happy with his position on the team, and he will talk to Dr. Buss, but then he ends by telling the media that he's gonna talk to Dr. Buss about what he can do because he wants to be traded. Now, just in case you all aren't familiar with the situation, this really happened. There was so much tension between these two, Magic Johnson and his coach, Paul Westhead, that there was a scuffle in Utah that led to Magic talking to the media and telling him this exact same thing. So, man, this is so good. I am just loving how they're building this because this is the reality of the NBA. Obviously, I'm not a player, but I've been watching basketball my whole life, and I've followed the Los Angeles Lakers since I was a kid. It is so hard to not only win a championship, but it's even harder to repeat as a championship because as this episode shows so beautifully, players and coaches and management, they are not always on the same team. And plus, when you throw in the media, plus when you throw in 
personal things off the court, it is so hard to win a championship. And I think this episode showed that so beautifully. Now, to answer the question I posed up top, who handled the situation worse? Was it Coach Westhead? Was it Magic Johnson? Was it both of them? Well, I lay on the camp that it was both of these individuals. As Coach Westhead did some really unprofessional things in this episode, talking to Kareem about him losing his job potentially, Kareem going to play for the Knicks and all that stuff was so unprofessional. And obviously the way he handled the Magic situation in front of the team, also in the press, terrible, terrible, terrible. But again, if there is a little bit playing devil's advocate, I can kind of understand where he was coming from. Again, the whole luck of it all, how he's being undermined by management, how the players aren't buying in. You have to stand your ground. So I kind of get it, but it doesn't mean he's doing the right thing. Speaking of doing the right thing, I can side with Magic Johnson, but at the same time, I don't approve of a player overlapping his coach to speaking directly, not only to the general manager. He's not talking to Bill. He's not talking to Jerry West. He's going straight to the owner of the team. Again, I understand the relationship between Magic and Bust and reality, how they were close, but that's not normally how things work, ladies and gentlemen. You don't normally surpass your coaching and your management and go straight to the owner to shake things up. That's not how you run things, right? So there is things that were handled terribly by both of these individuals, but that's my thought in this episode. Again, I love the way they show the drama, and I know what's going to happen next, and I can't wait to talk to you all about it in next week's episode because if you're familiar with the situation, Pat Riley might be getting a new position soon, but we'll talk about that next week. But let me know in the comments as we wrap things up. What did you think of the episode, your pros, your cons? Am I the only one that feels that the Dr. Buss family drama with Jeannie and Honey is just the weakest part of the show so far? Let me know your thoughts on all that. You all are awesome. I appreciate you all. Before we wrap things up, if you enjoyed the breakdown, consider hitting the like button, sharing this video, leaving your thoughts in the comments, and of course, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell. That way you can stay up to date with all my content. You all are great. Hope you're staying safe. Consider joining the community. Check out my reviews for this show. Check out my most recent review, and I'll catch you all on the next breakdown.